There's a number of reasons we're seeing more COVID-19 activity again, and more infections. The main reason is that this virus continues to spin off new mutations, new strains, and over time, these strains acquire a combination of mutations that allow it to get around our antibodies. The response that our body gets after we've had infection or a vaccine, and that we're seeing that driving some of the infections. The other reason is that we've seen increased activity in the summer in years past as well. It's probably because there's more people traveling, because of the intense heat outside, more people are gathered together indoors where we have less ventilation than outdoors. And then lastly, we're about that time frame where we're several months out from the respiratory virus season in the winter. And so a lot of people's natural immunity is probably a little bit lower now, people a little more susceptible to infection. There is an updated COVID vaccine that's coming out. It's anticipated it'll be available late August, probably more likely September. So pretty soon, this will target the JN.1 strain, which is it's close to the circulating strains right now. So the updated COVID vaccine is on the way late August, early September. That's a great question. The answer is a little tricky. I think most people that have gotten the vaccine from last year, that 23-24 vaccine, which wasn't many people, by the way, only about 22% of adults in the United States got that vaccine and only about 14% of kids. So I think most people have made that decision if they're gonna get that vaccine or not. The updated vaccine is gonna be around pretty soon in, in late August, early September. So I think if you really wanted to get the existing vaccine, you could. But keep in mind that if you get that, you're going to need to wait about three months before you get the updated vaccine, which is going to be available in about a month, month and a half. And so if you have questions about that, I would recommend talking to your doctor. Maybe you could look at your risk factors for more severe COVID infection to see if you should get the existing vaccine. I think most people are going to hold tight and get that updated vaccine when it comes out. This updated COVID vaccine that's coming out soon really targets the strains that are circulating now a little bit better. So very similar to what we see with the updated flu vaccine every year, they pick a vaccine with components that will more closely match what they anticipate will be circulating. That's the idea behind this updated COVID vaccine that's coming out. It's based on the predominant strains that are circulating now. The most common variant right now are offshoots of this JN.1, so it's kind of alphabet soup, but it's important to recognize we've moved away from the XBB variants or the strains that we were seeing really mid last year. So there has been a shift. These new variants are called flirt variants, and that really relates to two different mutations in these strains. And again, these are the two mutations that are making it so contagious and infectious right now that are allowing these new strains to get around our immune response from prior infections or prior vaccinations. And so it's important that we identify that and have this updated COVID booster to more closely match what's circulating. I think one of the concerns we have with the COVID vaccine is how closely does it match what's circulating now? The good news is with some of these newer vaccine platforms, these mRNA platforms, they're able to produce the vaccine a little bit faster than we saw with more traditional platforms. And so it's a little bit easier to match what's in the vaccine to what's circulating because there's less lead time needed to produce the vaccines. So there's still hope for the combined flu COVID vaccine that will make things much more convenient for lots of people. And actually Moderna has finished some phase three trials, which is the last stage of trials that has to be performed to show that this vaccine is clinically effective. And the good news was that they saw very good positive results in antibody levels in people that received this combined vaccine. Unfortunately, it will not be available this fall. It hasn't gone through all the other regulatory hurdles it has to go through to be available to the general public, but we should anticipate that it will be available next year, and that will make things a lot more convenient. This is an excellent question, and I recently ran into this question in my own household. So they do have an expiration date, and the reason for that is that there's liquid in the test that can evaporate over time, and then the testing strips have some antibodies that are specific for the virus that causes COVID. Over time, the protein in those strips will kind of break down over and make that test less effective. And so if you use an expired test, you have a higher chance that you're going to have a false negative, meaning it says it's negative, but you may actually have COVID. What's important to check, though, is if that expiration date has been extended because the FDA has allowed some extension of some of the test kits. So the best way to check that is to go to the FDA website. If you type FDA COVID test expiration date into your internet browser of choice, it should take you to the FDA page and then you can match it with your test and the lot number and it will tell you what the extended expiration date is if it has been extended. And so you may be able to use it longer than what it says on the box. 
This is a really good question. A lot of people are counting on natural immunity, but natural immunity wanes. So does immunity from the vaccine as well. Natural immunity, it's estimated that for most people, it lasts for about three to four months. So that can change some depending on your age, depending on other medical conditions you may have or some medicines you may take that suppress your immune system. And it also depends because exposure with natural immunity, uh, some people have milder infections and have less robust of an immune response. So it can vary a little bit, but the short answer is about three to four months. These new variants are more transmissible, but fortunately we are not seeing more severe disease and we're really not seeing new symptoms either. So people are continuing to have the classic symptoms that we now associate with COVID. So sore throat, nasal congestion, cough, fatigue, headache. There's still loss of smell and taste. People still get that now. We really saw that at the beginning, but we're still seeing some people have some of those symptoms now. This is a great question, and we wish that we could be able to tell by clinical signs and symptoms, but the reality is that the signs and symptoms that you have with COVID, flu, and other respiratory illnesses are pretty nonspecific, and they overlap quite a bit. So it's impossible to tease out which of those you may have. We can sort of guess when COVID numbers are really high like they are now and the other respiratory viruses are lower, that it's more likely to be COVID. But the only way you would really be able to confirm it is with a diagnostic test, like a PCR test that's done in specialized labs. Most people probably don't need that, it is important to know that, that all of these viral illnesses are transmissible to other people, and so you should keep that in mind. Please stay home if you're sick, wear a mask if you're gonna be around others so you don't expose other people to illness. It's important for us to stay informed of where COVID level is at. So that as we learn to live with COVID, we learn what measures we need to take to protect ourselves. So everybody should do their own risk calculation. What risk factors do they have for more severe disease, particularly people that are over 50, or over 65, if you have underlying medical illnesses, if you take medicines that might impair your immune system, you should realize that COVID levels are really high in our community right now. And so if you're gonna to go to a crowded indoor space where there's not great ventilation, you should probably consider wearing a mask because you're gonna be around other people that may be minimally symptomatic, but it's still able to transmit COVID to you. So take some precautions if you have risk factors that put you at high risk for infection. If you have symptoms, please stay home. Also taking a test to confirm if you have COVID is a good idea because again, if you're at risk for severe disease, you can also take Paxlovid. You could take things that can help reduce your risk of having more severe disease. The newest CDC recommendations on isolation for COVID, they're really trying to make this more like other viral respiratory infections. They're asking that people stay home until they have at least 24 hours past their last fever, overall improvement in their symptoms, but then they still wear a mask when they're around other people for five days from their symptom onset. So that's the current setting for the, how to isolate if you have a COVID infection.